I just want to thank those who are here. Now I'm not going to be able to take a nap this afternoon because i got to do some research. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> Appreciate that. No, I'm just kidding. It was a very good class, and I appreciate all the comments and everything, and we'll figure it out. If not tonight, when we go to heaven, we'll figure it all out, so we'll have it there. Um, it's always bitter, pretty much bittersweet when I come and preach, because either Mary or Doug is sick, or something's <laughs> happened. Um, it's sweet when I can come and fill in for Doug and give him a rest, but it's bitter when one of the two are ill and I have to, I come to fill in for him. But I always appreciate the opportunity and appreciate everyone here as my second family home. So it's really good. And you'll have to tell Doug that I appreciate him falling down the stairs because he made my sermon, me finish this sermon I've been working on for four months. So, I don't know if you'll see it that way. Yeah, I don't know if you'll see it that way anyways. But um, he at least, you know, we got to look for something good to come out of it. So he did that. Um, in today's society, we hear this word a lot. It's called inclusion. We hear it constantly. Everybody should be included. Everything goes. Everything's there. The man, men's definition in, of inclusion is the action or state of including or being included within a group or structure. That's what man's definition of inclusion is. I can't underestimate how much this word is used in the academic side of of the nation and different groups and different people using this word constantly and often times the Church of Christ is accused of not including everyone they have heard people say oh I've had a I've been have enough with the Church of Christ they're not quite living the way, the way that God tells them to live it, and they don't believe that we include people. But instead, that is totally wrong. Instead, the only thing we are against is what? What God authorizes us to be against, and that is sin. That's the only thing the church is against in this world, is sin. We're not against any group of people or organizations. We're purely against sin. And this book right here clearly describes what sin is. If you pick it up and you read it, you'll know what sin is. But people have the gall to accuse God of not including them at all. I've heard that. God does not include everybody. Now... I'm going to go here a little farther and say this. And you may look at me strange, but God is the creator of inclusion. You may say, what are you talking about? Well, if you don't tar and feather me, just give me a second and I'll explain it. If we want to look first at Galatians 3.28... Galatians 3.28 There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for all are one in Christ Jesus. God wants everyone included. He makes no exceptions, and He wants everyone to come to Him through Jesus. God wants everyone to come to Him through Jesus. We realize we're a Gentile, right? We're not a Jew, we're Gentiles. He wants the Jew and the Gentile, the slaves and the free people, and male and female. Now that just about covers the entire world in one way or another. So there's the first point where God wants to include everybody. Now we want to go to Romans 12. Fifteen through eighteen. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. 
Be of the same mind towards one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Repay no evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of men. If possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. God wants us, first of all, to be involved with everyone. Right there it says, live peaceably with every man that you can, as much as it is to you. Also, he wants harmony in our lives to be good, to live in peace, to be honorable in the sight of all. He wants us to be examples. He wants us to lead. But he wants us to include all when we do that. Everyone should be included by God wants that to happen. He wants peace, harmony, and inclusion. John 3.16, God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son to save it. This world is condemned. We know we live in a condemned, deteriorating world. God so loved the world, it does not say God, he only loved, quote, good people. God loves everyone. He loves the world entirely, and there's no variation in his love. Or he would not have sent Jesus to, to this world. He loves the entire world. He wants the entire world included. Romans 3.23 For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We've got to remember that we were sinners. We've got to remember that we still sin. And we've got to remember that God has included us. And he's going to include other sinners too. Someone once said, if you walk into a church and it's perfect, turn around and walk out. Because you're only going to destroy it. <laughs> there is no perfect church. There's no perfect person. But, he, we all deserve, we don't deserve the salvation but we get the grace of Jesus to be saved. That's extended to everyone, not just a few people. 15.7, Romans 15.7. Therefore receive one another, just as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Be welcoming. We are to be welcoming. We are to receive people. We are to receive visitors. We're to receive the people of the world. We are not to be part of the world, but we're to be in the world. God wants us to be welcoming. He wants us to be open. And He wants the whole world to know about Jesus. And that's us. We need to do that. He wants to include everyone. Ephesians 4.25 Almost regulations. 4.25 Therefore, putting away lying, let each one of you speak true with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. We're to be honest to one another. We're to be honest to the world. We're to like one another. And most importantly, remember, God looks at sin as sin. There is not one greater than another. Every sin is a sin to God. We have a way of characterizing lesser and greater sins as human beings. God doesn't. God says sin is sin. We say, oh, that's a minor sin, but yet this is a major sin. We kind of do that scale tipping thing. And whenever we want it to tip one way or another, we kind of do that. God doesn't. It's just flat across the thing. Sin is sin. We have to remember that. John 14.6 Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. God wants everyone included, but he wants everyone to come through Jesus. There's no other way to get in to God except through Jesus. And the world has to know that. To be included, 
You have to come through Jesus. Now, here's the separation from God's inclusion versus man's inclusion. Now, remember, I made the statement that God is the original creator of inclusion. But man believes that inclusion is open-ended. Anything goes at any time. Everything is fine as long as it's done so every, everyone's personal beliefs, actions, thoughts are not curved in any way. That's what man believes inclusion is. You can worship a tree if you want. You can pray Jesus into your heart and you're saved. You can marry anyone you want. Drugs and alcohol recreational use is perfectly fine. Basically, anything you want to do as a man, you should, everyone should be included in that. And you shouldn't say no to anything. That's what inclusion means to the world. Now God's inclusion, some people say, has restrictions in the process of God's family. And man often has the gall to ask, or says, that is not inclusion, that's exclusion. Who is God to put any restrictions on me? Now, we're going to take a look at that. Let's look at some more verses. I'm not going to read them because you're all familiar with them. But let's go and look at some verses to show God's right to define inclusion. Because if he is the true creator of inclusion, he is the one that can define inclusion. Let's remember God has been about inclusion since the beginning. In Genesis 1.1, he is the creator of everything. Now, if you ask me, the person that creates it can define it. Man can't do that. In Genesis 1.14, he separated dark and light, divided day and night, and made seasons, days, and years. There's no man that I know can do that. So, once again, he made everything. Genesis 1.27 he created man in his own image. Man and woman in his own image. Now that's pretty amazing as we look at these things. In Genesis 2.7, he breathed life into man. Man became a living soul. Remember that. God breathed life into man and man became a living soul. So what he created is now trying to tell God... How to define it. That's pretty tough, isn't it? They telling him that. In Colossians 1.16, we are told again, all things are created through God, everything visible and invisible, and what? It is created for Him. We are created for God. We are created by God and for God. To glorify God. So God has the right to tell us certain things. Actually, he has the right to tell us everything. And inclusionists don't like that. John 1, 3, we are told again, everything was made by him. Without God, nothing would have been made. You can believe what you want to believe, but without God, nothing would have been here. No person could define anything without God. Romans 1.20, we know that he, sh that he is all-powerful and we can clearly see God's work. We have no excuses not to give God what God demands. Man has no excuses not to do what God says. Can you see the invisible air that we're breathing? Without it, we're dead. Can we see the sunshine outside? It's beautiful, isn't it? The green grass, isn't it beautiful? Isn't snow on a field, not on the roads, beautiful? <laughs> Everything around us, your brothers and sisters, the glaring and the glowing of people's faces, the love that you have for one another, that's all beautiful. And as we talked about in class, forgiveness is beautiful. We have beautiful. God has done that. Now, the 
question is, is this. Inclusion. Who invented inclusion? God or man? I believe the answer is pretty clear from the scriptures that I used. He created everything, and God has a right to define everything. He has a right to define inclusion. Now, God defined it to be into God's kingdom or His church or to be added by to His book of life. This is the basics. We hear it all the time, and sometimes I think it goes over our heads because we hear it so much. You got to tell me the six things. You got to hear the word. You got to believe the word. You got to have godly sorrow or repentance. Be baptized for the remission of sin. That's the part of being immersed, is where you come in contact with Jesus' blood. And you become in that covenant relationship with God. Now the inclusion part is, to stay in that inclusion part, you've got to live your life faithfully until the end. That's how you're included. And that's the definition of inclusion, is God's definition, is living your life faithfully until the end. God has that right to define the word. Man has no right at all to go against God's word. Well, I guess what I'm going to say is, you have a choice today. Man's made up description of inclusion, where anything goes, or God, the original creator of inclusions, God's definition of conclusion. And I can't stress this point enough. You'll hear it from people that in all walks of life and all different types of lifestyles say, the church doesn't include me. No, you don't include yourself to God. That's what you have to do. Inclusion does not mean that you have the right to live your life any way you want to. There's no one in this room that has the right to live their life any way they want to. There's nobody in the church has the right to live their life any way they want to. God has strictly defined how we do things. How we do worship services. How we live our life. What we can and cannot do. Once again, sin is sin to God. It doesn't matter whether you murdered someone or you tell this little tiny white lie. It's the same to God. And if you want to be included in God's book of life, you have to stay on those scales like this and to be included. God is holy and we were created by Him to worship Him and be with Him. I don't know why anyone would want to exclude themselves from that opportunity. They just don't understand. And we have to try to show them lovingly, tenderheartedly, we talked about, what God wants them to do. And that's to be included. I know my choice. I want the original. I want God's definition of inclusion. I don't want man's cheap copy, made up definition of inclusion where everything goes. But I want God's inclusion. But right now I have two questions to ask you. If you have not been included into God, why not? Don't wait. We're not guaranteed one more moment of life on this earth. It's time. And if you have, and as Doug has this week, and Dan both stumbled and fallen, literally, but if you're stumbling in your heart or in your mind about God, it's time to reconcile that. God has wanted you from the very beginning, Genesis 1.1. He has wanted you. He knows everything. And from that point, He's wanted you. God wants you to be included with Him for eternity. So don't fall into that inclusion by man. 
fall into God's inclusion and be in that book of life. If there's anything we can do for you, please come as we stand and sing. Heart, the gentle voice of Jesus